Philippine City volunteers distributed relief supplies for tricycle drivers. City delegates held its first press conference in COP26 to share about city's actions and environmental protection. Welcome to Dad Headlines. I'm Just Ho. Thank you for joining us. Coronavirus transmission in the Philippines has been declining in the recent weeks. Manila City volunteers prepared a relief distribution in North Kalua camp for tricycle drivers, bringing support for more than 2,700 families. Different colored cloths are reorganized into new clothes. During the pandemic, this method of making income is done by Domingo's wife. Though the household has less income, the couple still donates to the Bamboo Coin Bank on a daily basis. Although I have less income, I still save money every day because volunteers say that the Bamboo Coin Bank is a blessing for others. If the coin bank is full, I will pour it into a plastic bag and then keep on saving. As the pandemic eased in the Philippines, city volunteers in Manila continue relief distributions at a stadium North Caloocan, providing supplies to 2,721 tricycle drivers and solving their short-term needs. We should be holding the distribution for tricycle drivers last year, but due to the pandemic, it got serious, so the plan was delayed until now. Since the pandemic situation slowed down, we can do this and improve the living standards of the tricycle drivers. On the day of the distribution, at early morning, a long line of tricycle drivers await. Volunteers gave out two bags of rice, each weighing 10 kilograms. And along with a bag of living supplies, recipients and their family members can put food on the table for some time. The pandemic affected our income. Our income is halved. In the past, I can save money, but now I don't even have money to spend for daily necessities. Thank you, Zigi, for providing rice and living supplies, supporting our lives in the toughest times. To us tricycle drivers, these supplies really help us a lot. I will forever remember the help you have given us, and I will never forget about spreading the blessings to others in the future. As tricycle drivers receive supplies, they will also start saving into the Bamboo Coin Bank, allowing the power of love to spread to more people in need. For this year's City New Shoot Scholarship Awards in Taipei, Wenshan and Xingdian districts, the Special Performance Awards went to two children with excellent achievements in boxing and basketball. It has only been three years for Xiao Xin to practice boxing, but she has already received many awards. This medal is of the greatest significance to her. This is my first medal awarded in 2018. Back then, she had just practiced boxing for less than two months, but already got the first runner-up in her first match. Xiao Xin's athletic talent and her own interest allow her to perform well in boxing. This year, she even won the Tzu News Scholarship Special Performance Award. If my child is interested in this kind of sport, or she already has a goal in it, I think as parents, we should support her. When she was practicing boxing, so the volunteers came to present a word and blessings. She also expressed her expectations for herself. I hope in the future, I can get good results and perform well in every game. Another scholarship recipient, student Zhang, is also talented in sports. His outstanding performance made him recommended to the baseball team in a high school affiliated to National Taiwan Ocean University. Thank you, Ziji, for giving me the scholarship so that I can subsidize my family expenses. Before, I wanted to be a professional basketball player, but as I grew, I become more realistic. I just want to find a stable job and stay with my family. Between dream and life, the scholarship recipient chose his family as his first priority, making his future more practical. At Jiangou Junior High in Miaoli, Taiwan, a ninth grader Zhang Yiyun and her brother live with a single parent. Upon her mother's cancer diagnosis, Yiyun looked after her mother at home and studied hard in school to earn scholarships for the family. She's from a single parent family, and we mostly see her maturity and well behavior. Yeah. 
the weekend. I worked hard in school to earn scholarship money for my mother. I had just gotten custody of the kids. I'd work a job in the morning and one at night. Then I got sick. It turned out to be cancer. I cried. Every 21 days, I'd have to spend 120,000 NT dollars. I was sick and still very worried about money. When the kids are faced with their mother falling ill, it becomes a great burden on the children. They see the suffering of their parents and it really affects them. After she had surgery, she couldn't move at all and was in bed the whole time. My mother was healthy before. After I came to live with her, she got sick. I felt like it was my fault. She fakes her positivity sometimes. She has dark thoughts and will express it through drawing. She once drew a little girl crying and lots of negative thoughts surrounded her, such as, no one wants you, no one likes you. She will nag me because I am her mother. I worry that if she is too tired, her cancer might come back. She's a really thoughtful person. My mom has to pay a lot of tuition, so I need to save as much as possible. Don't they usually give out apples to students at school? And when some of the students don't eat it, she will bring a bunch home and say to me, Mom, look, the other students gave me their apples. Now you don't have to buy it. A new pen costs 30 NT dollars. But if I save the shelf and just replace the ink, bam, it's only 25 NT dollars. Sometimes I'll ask her if she loves me, and she will purposely say that she doesn't. Then when I ask her again, she'll say, I lied, I do love you. I get home and will study until 10 or 11 at night. Probably because of that, my eyesight has gotten worse. That level of difficulty and her positivity is not something normal children can muster up. With them by my side, I am much more at ease. No matter how difficult life is, I know it's worth it. A Jingzi Books and Cafe was opened in Liu Chou Junior High School in Xiao Liu Chou, Taiwan. The school has provided the old library space to redecorate into the new reading area so the children can have a tranquil spot for studying and cultivations. The blue and clear sky welcomed the volunteers to Liu Chiu Junior High School in Xiao Liu Chiu, Pindong County. They were going to join the opening ceremony of the Jingsu Books and Cafe in the school campus. The Jingsu Books and Cafe was completed half a year ago, but its opening was postponed due to the pandemic. Adopting donors also came in person to join. I heard that the place where the original library located was lent out and set up as a Jingsu Books and Cafe. I believe that for Tsuji and for students, it should be a place with good environment for learning and calming one's mind. In fact, all the offshore islands in Taiwan have a Jinsi Book and Cafe, including Jinmen, Maju, Lanyu, and Green Island. Actually, there is a second Jinsi Books and Cafe in Xiao Liu Chou. The books on the shelves can inspire people's kindness. Moisture-proof wood cabinets, which are suitable for the island climate, are used here so that the books can be well preserved allowing teachers and students to use for a long time. I hope our kids can make good use of the space, whether they are in reading lessons or regular times, they can come in to read. I feel calm here and want to read alone. This calming space allows teachers and students to read quietly and enhance their spiritual strength. At COP26, Tsuji's UN delegates held its first press conference on November 3rd, the Finance Day. The attendees were very intrigued by Tsuji's specific actions and achievements in energy conservation and carbon reduction in many different sectors over the years.
November 3rd is Finance Day here at COP26, where political, policy and business leaders are discussing the role of money in achieving net zero emissions around the world. Moi, je représente le bassin du Congo. Me, I represent the Congo Basin. The Congo Basin today is practically the first ecological basin of the planet, the first ecological lung of the planet with the forests, with the peatlands ecosystems. And today we hold around 30 billion tons of CO2, the equivalent of three years of emission of the planet. That means the rich countries should give the money to the developing country until now only less than 10 percent of the money reached the goal so it's not easy to uh, make the climate finance especially country to country in 2015 in paris with the paris agreement my country ratified this agreement we still haven't seen the 100 billion dollars promise and today they're giving us other promises that they're telling us will start from 2023. And they've mobilized a bit of money for us and they're wondering how to get started. So there's practically nothing at the stage. Climate financing is a tug of war between developed and developing countries. Despite negotiations and commitments, taking action is the real key point. Today, Siji's UN delegation held its very first press conference at COP26, putting forward its action plan while sharing its own achievements in emissions reduction over the years. Our founder, Master Zheng Yan, she never traveled around the world, but the compassion in her heart, we talk about carbon neutrality, it's been in her mind for so many years, from food security, food justice, from environmental awareness, from volunteer engagement, community outreach. It's right there, the circle of our life. Climate change will uh, put burdens on uh, human health and also health care will also produce some waste or some greenhouse gas. So in Siji hospitals, we have many, many uh, actions uh, to uh, reduce the climate impacts. And I just attended a really incredible press conference from the Tsuchi. And I'm very, very interested in the work of seven hospitals that serve exclusively plant-based diets and have demonstrated a reduction in greenhouse gases and overall cost to run hospitals based on the diets that they serve. I am very excited to hear this, and I think it will be a really great asset to the world to understand better how plant-based diet fi figures into healthcare. Siji engaged to UNCCC since 2010 and now, it's about time. We see master's teaching has been heard and the voices has been implemented into the participants through different country, through different stakeholders. Do what you say, say what you do. You set a model for people to follow. Today, during the press conference, we see that kind of message being heard. In response to climate change, Taiwan's Council of Agriculture established a net zero carbon emission project office. Starting on November 8th, the office is holding over 30 seminars across the country, inviting industry, government scholars and consumers to brainstorm plans for carbon emission reduction. Pig farms produce a lot of pig excrement and processing this waste definitely produces lots of biogas. According to the latest statistics of the Council of Agriculture, 5.5 million pigs are being raised nationwide. With 2.5 million pigs, the annual amount of biogas production used as fuel could lead to power generation capacity as high as 6 megawatt, which can supply more than 10,000 households, which is equivalent to saving 430 million NT dollars per year in natural gas fuel costs. The carbon emissions that can be deducted are almost emissions of 208,500 scooters. Agricultural green energy, such as the development of solar power, over nine years has accumulated the current installed capacity of 1.8 gigawatt, accounting for 50 percent of the entire agricultural sector's electricity consumption. In 2025, 
we can reach the 9.3 gigawatt so that our agricultural department will contribute energy to other sectors of the country for use. In the current COP26 held in the United Kingdom, the United States requested a 30 percent reduction in methane. Then this is not only from the rice fields, but also from our excrement and even the improvement of our digestive system. Establish a net zero emission project office will lead to 27 rounds of national seminars inviting all parties to make strides towards the goal of carbon reduction. In Malaysia, Tzu volunteer Ko Yanping has been a vegetarian for many years. Last year, she further adopted a plant-based diet and witnessed its benefits. Ko Yanping is now even more confident in promoting healthy vegetarianism. Putting extra work in cooking and seasoning while utilizing less oil and salt, Guo Yeping makes delicious plant-based cuisine. Because when I started to make plant-based food, it didn't taste good. Through courses, learning in teams and videos shared from a doctor, I became more interested in plant-based diets, so I studied more about it. A vegetarian for 13 years, city volunteer Guo Yeping found out about plant-based diet starting in 2020 as she witnessed the healthy changes on herself. In the past, I wore skirts and everyone thought that I am a person that cares about beauty. I also wore stockings because my legs had enzyme. After participating in a Health Challenge 21 event, my condition improved, but it still didn't go away. But after three months, my legs no longer have enzyme and I have beautiful legs now. After experiencing changes, Ko Yeping is now sharing her own experiences and cooking tips allowing more people to understand the benefits of a plant-based diet. Hello, you are here. Welcome. Please come in. Today we are cooking the sweet and sour king oyster mushroom. In order to make a healthy meal, half the plates must have vegetables. Mushrooms belong to veggies, so we should add half to that here. Proteins should be a quarter of your meal, and over here we add a quarter portion of rice. Since the end of April, she started to cook vegetarian food. Told by sister Guo Yanping, I also ate plant-based food at home all the time, and I try to cook plant-based diet at home. It's not that tough. You just need to spend some time and think about it. It's acceptable to adopt a plant-based diet because it's delicious and my children are accepted easily. We will pet this today. Everyone, when you go home, you may enjoy the meal. Thank you. I hope I can bring plant-based diet to more people, so that they can be like me, such the benefit planet Earth. We should cherish life and protect the health of people around us, especially our family members' well-being. With the right methods, vegetarianism allows people to have more nutritious balance. Besides benefiting our own health, we are also promoting eco-friendliness. At Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, a restaurant named Song Shan Zai provides free vegetarian breakfast and lunch meals. It was founded by a group of 18 friends and began its operation in July 2020 as their owners hope to encourage customers to adopt a vegetarian diet and promote environmental protection. Preparing his own lunchbox for a delicious vegetarian meal, Herb Charles, a French person living in Malaysia, is a frequent customer here. How often are you coming here? Every day? Uh, almost two, three times a week. Located in Kuala Lumpur, Song San Zai is a vegetarian restaurant providing free breakfast and lunch. The restaurant was established by 18 people, and starting last year in July, they started to promote vegetarianism and eco-friendliness. At first, we'll tell customers that they must bring their own lunch boxes. If they are here for the first time, it's fine. We'll give you a paper container because we want to encourage people to eat vegetarian food. In the restaurant, two round tables are placed next to each other. The restaurant owner hopes to see customers sitting together, sharing their vegetarian experiences. Zai means a place where everyone comes to meet one another. It's like going home to eat. 
In the past, Willie received help from others. Now he is successful as he hopes to bring more people into the trend of doing good deeds. In the past, I will remember the help I have received. Today, I am successful because I never forget about the help I received. I will give back to the community. As the ripple of kindness starts to spread in the community, Dong Mei, a customer and now volunteer, wants to join into the bandwagon of doing good deeds. They are busy and lying up. During lunch, the line gets very long. When I'm here to receive meals, I will also help the owners out. Utilizing the weekend free time, everyone is here to prep meals in order to send food to a nursing home and an orphanage. There are 50 or 60 people at the nursing home. It really moves me emotionally when I see them. So I feel that besides being filial to our parents, we must give back to society more. The trend of good deeds has now affected nearby residents as they use the restaurant as a distribution location, providing supplies to people in need. We hope to help and it's not limited to our area. Actually, whichever area you are from, it doesn't matter. If you need help, you may come. Besides promoting eco-friendliness, restaurant owners have created a trend of doing good deeds, allowing the community to follow and adopt the trend of love. Pingdong Ciji volunteer Xu Yunchai freely provided the farmland almost 0.4 hectares for growing medicinal plants, fish mint and OER code data. Pingdong volunteers looked after the seedlings and are hoping to help producing herbal teas to protect the health of more people. Spreading black plastic to prevent weeds from emerging important TCM herbs are about to be planted. Fish mint will be the main crop on this farm. <laughs> Volunteers are bent over each with a tool, digging and loosening the soil and sweating. They're very sincere in this work, but to increase their efficiency, one volunteer who is a farmer brought a drill to quickly loosen the soil. Normally, we are drilling to plant banana seedlings. This can save the work of more than 10 laborers. The drill used for banana seedlings greatly saves time and effort, making volunteers very happy. This is the best dream place where you can do physical work and empty your mind. To plant medicinal herbs, Xu Yunyun, a Ziji Pingdong volunteer, provided fallow fields owned by his parents. But first, a special test of soil quality was needed. I want to say, why are we so blessed? I immediately did some soil and brought it to the soil improvement lab to check it. It's clean. There is no cadmium or mercury pollution. This vegetable field has become a place to cultivate blessings and medicine as volunteers' hard work will soon allow these plants to grow and flourish. Hong Kong City volunteers have been visiting Sha Tian Hospital regularly for the past 27 years. The last Sunday in October each year is Sha Tian Hospital City Day. Let's take a look at their celebrations this year. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.